guest has a story that I want to say, go pour yourselves a drink and sit down because you're going to want to hear this one. But I want to start by saying I have known Jennifer Wilcov for over 20 years. We worked together in the early days and now, and I have been honored and grateful to be able to support her this past week in New York City, where she received the top professional award from the, Associ the International Association of Top Professionals for motivational speaking, for book consulting, and for being a multi-award winning author. So that, of course, is the latest update, but there's such a backstory. That's where that little pour yourself a drink is going to come in. Jennifer, welcome to Good Day Orange County. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's so nice to be here with you, Lauren. And as you mentioned, um, you know, for so many years, um, you've sort of seen a lot of what we have uh, are going to be talking about today. So couldn't exactly. be in a better place to talk about it. No, it's really kind of a magical time. So, you know, take us back. So you and I, you and I were, were in a dressing room in New York City uh, in about 2008, I believe. And you got a call from your attorney and your life immediately changed. So take us back there. So um, for a little while, I basically had been going through a legal process of being falsely accused of a white collar crime while I was working as a certified financial planner at one of the top six firms. And the, the investment that was in question was an investment that I had taken to my compliance supervisor before I did anything with it with my clients and had gotten his uh, direction of what to do. And then um, each week as a certified financial planner, I would discuss it with him as part of what was called a book of business when you are an investment advisor. And then suddenly um, all I knew was that I was being accused of being part of a scheme to defraud my clients as investors. And I actually was the one who flew out to sunny California. I'm the one who uh, confronted the perpetrators with an attorney that uh, my, an attorney in New York had helped me connect with out there. I'm the one who went to the Beverly Hills Police Department to report the crime. And I'm the person who asked that same California attorney to help me inform my clients of what had happened. And so I got this call in the dressing room that through all of that as it had progressed, that I was now going to be given a, a guilty verdict and a felony, and I was going to prison. And it was shocking. It was, I really didn't know what to do. And I actually called a girlfriend of mine and I said, I think they're gonna send me to jail. And she said, congratulations, this is gonna be the best thing that's ever happened to you. And I just sat there flabbergasted. <laughs> Why did she think it was gonna be the best thing for you? She thought that I was going, she made this prediction and projection. She had known me for so long and she said, this, this is going to be big. This is going to be great for you. And I was like, this is going to be great for me. What happened was they, they started taking everything away from me. They sold my co-op in front of me. They made me sit at the table and watch the check be passed across the table to them by the buyer. They, um, I had to sell my car. Um, they shut down every financial instrument I had. I didn't have a debit card. I didn't have a bank account. And they followed through. And my defense attorney dumped me in the courtroom, <laughs> which was really horrific. And I basically was so in Infuriated, but 
I didn't really have time to be angry because I had a bailiff who was standing behind me who asked me to stand up and put handcuffs on me and walked me to the back. And that's where I had my final conversation with my defense attorney who had proceeded to throw me under the bus. So falsely accused, falsely convicted, yep. falsely, wrongly imprisoned. Mm -hmm. And how did you prepare for that? How does somebody actually prepare for prison? Well, you know, I didn't know anybody else who had gone to jail at all. And so like for me, I was one of those people who was like for other people that I knew who had only had a parking ticket. And I had never even gone to a court to talk about a parking ticket. <laughs> I just pay it. You just pay it and be done. <laughs> and you're done. Um, so for me, it was really um, very strange, but I was also a martial arts practitioner, which I still am today. And so um, my beloved sensei, who uh, sadly just passed away in December, um, had introduced me to another sensei in a different art. Um, and so my art is Shintaido, which um, has uh, some roots up in Northern California, uh, which is really um, uh, very close to my heart in San Francisco. And um, the other sensei was a sensei in Aikido and in his dojo he had both people who were corrections officers and he also had people who had been in prison wow. and so um he asked me to come up to visit him and so I did and on the day that I came to visit he asked all of the people all of his students, all of his people who were instructors to stay away from the dojo that day. Don't come, don't hang out, don't plan to practice. It's not open. And nobody really knows this story, Lauren, so I'm happy to share it with you because um, Don Cordoza, who passed away in 2012, was one of my greatest heroes. And he that day stood with me in the dojo and said, okay, I know you're going to prison. I know. Now, what the same question you just asked me, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. I said, honestly, I really don't know. So he said, well, okay, let's start with you actually saying something to me. Let's say I'm going to beat you up. What are you going to say? I said, I don't know. And he said, no, this is no laughing matter. This is for real. Now, this is what you need to start to think about. He said, I'm Portuguese. I want you to call me a name. I said, I don't do that to people. He said, you do now. And he literally started training me on what to do. Then he looked at my hair, which was a lot longer than it is now. And he said, what are you going to do about that hair? I said, I think I'm going to tie it up. I said, you think so? He grabbed the top of my head and dragged me literally where I could barely keep my feet up all around the dojo by my head. And then he looked at me as he let go and he said, what do you think you're going to do with that hair now? I said, I think I'm going to cut it. He said, I think you should. He said, everything you see is a weapon for somebody else. He said, what do you do if somebody starts looking at you like they're going to rape you? What are you going to do? And I said, that one I don't know. He said, when you're in prison, he said, you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be in like your high school shower where basically there are faucets and there are several of them in the same area with a drain for each one or a drain in the middle. What are you going to do if somebody tries to attack you in there? And I said, that I don't know. I said, I don't know what to do there. And so he said, if somebody starts to look at you, he said, you turn 
away from them. And I said, well, then I won't be able to see them. He said, you turn your body away from them. You turn your energy away from them. And he said, if there's somebody nearby, you start talking to them. So I said, okay. Well, it's a really good thing that he did that because when I was in Rikers Island, one of the most violent prisons in, in the country, that's what happened to me. I was in the shower. I literally was by myself and somebody else had walked in. They started showering and they started looking at me and they were someone who was a troublemaker in that, in that particular dormitory in the prison. And all those words I just told you just came back to me in that moment. I turned away and someone outside the shower who was near the bunk where I was sleeping called out to me and said, Jennifer, are you in there? And I said, yes. And I said, can you get so-and-so? And so they saw what was going on because they could see the other woman, but they couldn't see me because I was on the side at one of the side showers. And so they went back to the area where my bunk was and sent somebody to go wash their clothes at the scrub sink that was right outside the shower. And I instantly, and they said, hey, Jennifer, and started to talk to me. And it was at that moment that that instinct kicked in and I started talking to her. And because we kept bantering back and forth, the other person got frustrated and left. And amazingly, <laughs> I mean, to get that kind of advice, to have that kind of information, I remember you prepping very diligently before you went to Rikers and, um, understanding also that your work has always been around energy. I mean, people don't know yet what you actually do. They know that you've received this amazing award. And of course, a little bit about your history as a financial advisor, but you're also a multi-award winning author and a motivational speaker and a coach and everything you do is heart-based and energy-based. And your own tagline has always been, you wanna tell us? Sure. You have the right to remain fabulous, no matter what the circumstance, situation, or condition, because it doesn't matter what happened or what someone said five minutes ago, you're still the same fabulous you, you always were. Which is exactly why, even after what most of us would consider a death-defying act that you actually came through Rikers, <laughs> um, for so many incredibly important reasons, that your business not only survived, it thrived, mm -hmm. and you didn't skip a beat. You you kept moving. And for our viewers, I do want to share that if you want more information about Jennifer's story, you can Google Jennifer S. Wilkov, Marie Claire. And there is a very, very detailed, wonderful article that Jennifer wrote that was published that tells a little bit about her story and it is hard to believe that these things actually happen, but they do. And part of your work is also with an organization called It Could Happen to You, right? Correct. Yeah, that article actually was a co-written article with the deputy editor of Marie Claire. And just an aside, we also won a Silver Eddie Award for that article. So I'm actually also an award-winning freelance writer. <laughs> and I'm well, the secretary of the board of It Could Happen to You. <laughs> I think people look, oh, nice, you know, nice middle-aged woman at this point. <laughs> Holy cow, how does this stuff happen? So after that, you've continued writing, coaching, speaking, and always, mm -hmm. as you said, to help whoever's in front of you become more and more fabulous and more and more themselves. So tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now. Well, right now, um, you know, I have been in my, what I would call my creative and story consulting or book, film, television, episodic series and stage production consulting um, for nearly 20 years that your book is your hook. And um, I have loved it and I continue to do it. I've helped 
So many disparate people become authors. Everyone from the Grammy Award winning co-producer of Fleetwood Mac, uh, Ken Calais with a book called Making Rumors, um, which is the inside story behind the making of the famous album. And um, to people who were completely unknown in lots of areas, um, you know, I've worked with professional organizers who are over 60, who basically um, put their talents together into a book about their unique way of working with their clients. And they created the first time-based deck of cards in the overcrowded, oversaturated uh, professional organizing space with my direction. Um, I was the national book marketing campaign manager for the first year of the Making Rumors book. And I've helped entrepreneurs, I've helped business owners, I've helped thought leaders blossom into major personalities. One of my clients is a comedian named Kareth Foster, uh, who basically was about to be fired on uh, I Miss in the Morning as his sidekick. And I completely helped her um, reinvent herself, basically. Uh, she's now a headlining comedian. She's been in a documentary. She has, she was the MC at the Shoreham Annual Conference for the Society of Human Resource Management, um, I think last year. And she has her own business. She has her own books. She's a best-selling author and she has a foundation. And that's what I do in that business very proudly to help others help others with their stories to entertain, educate, inspire, and motivate. <clears throat> For me, I have a second edition of Boys Before Business, which is a 14-year-old book that has been helping single, married, engaged, um, widowed, and divorced women to have it all have the relationships that they could only dream of and the careers that they love, things that they work at, that they're passionate about, both in love and in business. And it is possible. And we've been so fortunate to be able to do that. I love my co-author, Kim Miles, and um, we're looking to roll that out in April, which is so exciting. Um, the other thing that I'm also doing, I created a platform called Speak Up Women. And Speak Up Women is a community that is dedicated to women's self-expression. And that really is about emphasizing the importance of women using their voice and speaking up in their personal and professional relationships for personal and professional goals they have. For people in their world, no matter what age or stage, who can't speak up for themselves and for causes she cares about. Because when you speak up, that's how we change the world. That's how we make change where change is necessary. And that's how you actually can ask, you can help, you can find, you can discover, but you can't do any of those things. You can't even network or do what we're doing right now, Lauren, if you don't speak up. Right. And that's what I've done the whole time, including back to the legal case, I did that as well. And since you've been out, you have reversed all those charges. You have been exonerated of all wrongdoing. And now on to the rest of your fabulous life. Jennifer Wilcob, thank you so much for coming to share with us. Where can people find you and learn more? Um, one of the best places to find me is my website, jenniferswilcob.com. Uh, if you're interested in the uh, in the creative lane, uh, yourbookisyourhook.com is a great place to visit. And Speak Up Women is if you're interested and want to be inspired or want to join us, go to speakupwomen.com. The last piece I would say is thank you so much, Lauren, for this opportunity to talk about all this. You know, um, I'm still fighting the good fight. Uh, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority did find me 100% innocent unanimously of everything, like you said. Um, but we are still with our efforts of making the courts make it right. And so I really appreciate um, all this opportunity to explain to your listeners, your viewers, 
how important your show is because I think that it's so special to reunite with you in this special way. Thank you so much. And we'll have you back for an update. I just know it. I look forward to it. <laughs> and we'll be right back.